All right, time for another draftphysics.com video presentation. So, physicist Michael has responded essentially to the assertion that he um, he rigged the experiment, and his assertion is to somehow defend what he did, which is just incredible. It's incredulous that he could sit there and make any defense for his conduct and his statements. They're anti-science, they're lies, it's just complete nonsense. So, I mean, I made it clear in like three videos before he did the lever experiment, and obviously I made it clear in the five-minute videos, and I've made it clear in other videos that physicist Michael also saw how levers work, in my opinion, okay? <laughs> my model says, I made it clear over and over and over again made it clear and he's just lying that there was some misunderstanding so i drew this at least i've drawn drawn this at least a hundred times a hundred times you know this simple argument that the idea of the lever is that this a two mass here and a two mass here they weigh the same and the same and the argument is is that I put the one mass out here it weighs the same. This side says it weighs the same. And the idea is, is if this comes in with some sort of energy, obviously velocity minus, okay, um, less velocity than this will leave, <laughs> that what's going to happen is this will decelerate at exactly the same rate that this accelerates faster. That this will be a slow deceleration, and this will be a fast acceleration that the velocities will match. And that's the whole point of the lever. It allows you to convert the motion here into motion here and do the conversion between, say, a 10-ton train going 5 miles an hour and a 5-ton train going 10 miles an hour. It does the conversion. I've talked about the conversion over and over again. And in no case did I ever talk about a spring or a clay or any kind of deformable. <laughs> no way. So it was made clear over and over. He kept talking about it bouncing. I kept saying, my model doesn't have bounce in it. Newton's cradles don't bounce. There shouldn't be any bounce. There's no bounce to worry about. So you don't put clay or sponges in the way. Bad idea. I made that clear. And so it's just such a lie for him to pretend he misunderstood. <laughs> Is that his argument? He misunderstood when I said over and over again, there's not a bounce issue. It's going to do what a Newton's cradle does. Newton's cradles don't have springs. Newton's cradles don't have sponges. I mean, it's just so, it's just such a lie. So in the first paragraph of his lie, he puts the link to the original conversation to a point where I'm responding to the word bounce. I'm not responding to spring or sponge or any other crap. I'm responding to the idea of a bounce. That bouncing isn't an issue. You don't have to worry about it. You do the experiment right, there is no bounce. And that's what I was clearly explaining. And it's just such a dishonest... Ugh. Anyway, we're in the discussion video. So the video I made before the discussion video, I make it really clear. So just, just watch the videos where I uh, point out what really did happen. And I have the clips. Um, video, did DS insist on hard elastic collision? The whole point of the experiment, I kept saying, was to convert the energy from one side to the other side of the lever. No bounces, no bullshit. I mean, everybody else except him understood that. I don't think there's anybody who didn't understand what I was arguing for except him. I mean, all the critics knew what I was arguing for. <laughs> so, come on, this is ridiculous. We talked about the, that kind, the kind of collision here. Yeah, we also talked about it in other places. So there we talked about it because you said, well, I'm going to use springs and I'm going to use a, a sponge to you know, save his cart being taxed. And I automatically said, look, the point isn't to bother with bouncing. If you do the experiment right, there's no bounce. So, you know, he's even taken that out of context. So let me play the clip where it's even clearer, okay, <laughs> that what I'm saying the lever is going to do is different than what you're saying the lever is going to do. So I'm not worried about it because it's not going to do what you say, okay? <laughs> but he don't allow me to say that. 
He just says that somehow I'm saying the experiment is invalid because I'm going to say it didn't come out my way. No, I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say it came out my way and I'm right. But you have to do the experiment my way. You can't do it your way. It's just so ridiculous. Velocity of object one and the final velocity of object two in this balanced case, those will be the same. But that's not the same as how fast was the thing that was coming in actually came in and hit the lever. That's where the experiment that you're describing doesn't address this particular question. So this is where he's predicting that it won't transfer the energy. So the experiment actually proved him wrong. So it produced an outcome that says his prediction was absolutely wrong. My prediction was absolutely right. He used the same mass and he was able to transfer the energy. 90% of the momentum went from one side to the other side. And there was almost no bounce. So all of the energy lost was just energy to pushing the lever. Fact. Right, so you're saying only half the force went into the oscillator. What I'm saying is, by the time this thing, when this thing hits the bar, by the time that thing's stuck in the bar, that object has slowed down. Which means that that bar isn't moving as fast as it would have to for this thing to be going at full speed. It so says him, and again, it's not true. So it does do the conversion perfectly. And in fact, it would have done it perfectly for the one mass, but he didn't do the experiment. It's not going to be moving as fast once it hits the bar as we started with. That's the point that I make. Uh, without a spring, that is. Uh, yeah, well, my only counter argument to that is, is that's exactly the point I'm making, is that the deceleration on one side is perfectly going to match the acceleration on the other side. And so, it will have to. So that's the whole point, is to get all the energy going into the lever and out the other side. There can't be a bounce. A bounce is more energy. If something's bouncing back, then that's extra energy you didn't get into the object. It's just kind of obvious. Obviously, to me, it's not obvious to you people. So you think when something bounces off of a surface, more energy went into the surface, twice as much energy. And I'm arguing, no, it can only go into the other object if the other object moves. And if the other object moves, then the object isn't bouncing back as far. The more the other object moves, the less bounce I get back. Decelerate object one, which means it half accelerates object two. So his prediction was half and half. Half the energy going to the lever and move the, the two mass, and this mass will move twice, you know, half the energy here. So that didn't happen. There was zero bounce, even with a spring. So again, you're saying it's half. I'm saying it perfectly <laughs> matches the excel deceleration to the acceleration. There is no loss of energy. But okay, you're saying you're saying a, the typical teeter totter doesn't really work. Okay, that we're losing half the energy every time it goes up and down. There's half the energy is being destroyed if you jump onto it and have that kind of impact. So, of course, there's no difference between jumping and sitting and pushing. It's no difference. Yes. Well, why would it make any difference how the impact happens, whether it's gravitational pressure or whether it's something falling that's collected gravitational pressure? Those two pressures are the same. 9.8 meters per second is 9.8 meters per second. Because what you're trying to compare is how is this object moving before it has even seen a lever? Before it's even seen a lever, how is that object moving? So it's just so bizarre, right, that he makes these arguments, which are like, no, well, you're going to measure it. So, of course, you have to have contact with it. How it moves before, how does that make any difference? We're just talking about whether or not it can convert the energy from one side of the lever into the other side of the lever. I mean, how could, again, I made it so clear. That's all that's of interest here. How much energy goes from this side of the lever to this side of the lever? That's the only interesting question. And how is that value going to correspond to how fast this thing was launched? Uh, look, I'll, I'll grant your point. You're making a prediction. I'm saying I... So I'm obviously saying you're making a prediction. I think your prediction is shit. That's what I'm saying now. Just want the test done. If you're going to do this lever test where you do a two mass against a two mass or a half mass against a half mass at the appropriate conditions, just to verify that you're conserving most of the momentum. And if you're not conserving it, then we can just stop doing the experiment because it's useless. So I'm just making a simple point that from my perspective, levers aren't converters if they can't convert the energy from one side of the lever to the other side. So I was quite confident they can. And they, in fact, did when he did the test. So 90% of the energy went from this side into this side, proving that levers work, as I stated, and not as he stated.
his prediction was flatly wrong. My prediction was completely correct. I mean, if you're losing half the velocity of the object, then clearly all my predictions would be moot and irrelevant because half the energy is being lost. If you can't move an object that has the same profile, then there's no chance you're going to move an object that has a different profile, right? If it can't convert the energy when it's in the same denomination, when I can't put 50 cents in and get 50 cents back, I have no hope of putting 50 cents in and getting 50 cents in you know, Canadian money. <laughs> I have no I have no hope of doing the conversion. If it can't do it when it's the same, it has exactly the same properties, having it work with something with different properties has no practical probability of working. So, okay, so this is a, a central point in terms of method that I, I really want to like honestly talk about. Um, so just pay attention here because apparently he had the word clay already in mind. Clay was something that was already part of the experiment for him. I didn't realize that, right? But he's going to say the word clay here. Why the fuck would anybody put clay on a lever? Your model is making a prediction about how this thing would go if we have that you know, one-to-one -one mass. My model makes a different prediction. Right. His is overtly wrong, and he's not accounted for that at all. He's not said, yes, I was wrong. He's not admitted it, not said a damn thing. My model failed. This fundamental test, it failed. No concession whatsoever. The flat truth is the experiment proved me right, proved him wrong. Even when it had a spring on it. So if your position is, I don't believe this system is properly calibrated, this, this lever system is properly calibrated. He, he keeps turning this into some argument about how he performs the experiment when I'm not objecting to how you're performing it. I'm objecting to the fact that it hasn't been done and you need to do it. So do it. Unless it matches my prediction. Oh, I'm just making a simple argument that if the lever doesn't conserve momentum, when it's a fundamental thing, right? I mean, the whole point is, is you want to try to do experiments where you're going to take the energy from one object and put it into another object. The contention is that levers can do that. I'm making that contention. If we find out levers can't do it at all, then yeah, it's moot. It's not useful as a tool to convert energy. Duh. And I haven't even changed the masses, okay, with the same mass and it can't even exchange the momentum, then clearly there's no conversation about levers conserving momentum because it fails to do it even when these masses are the same. It can't even do the Newton's cradle for frig's sake. If it can't accomplish the, the Newton's cradle, then why would, I have a, why would I even talk about levers as useful devices? They clearly lose half the energy right off the bat. Let, let me flip this for a second. Suppose I said, I am only, let's say you were doing an experiment and suppose I said, I am only going to think that this system is properly calibrated when we do the one. So it's nothing about what I said. I wasn't talking about calibration. I was just talking about, look, you're just doing the experiment. If the experiment demonstrates that levers can't convert momentums, then there's no other conversation about using levers to convert momentum because they can't do it. One to one masses, if we get half the velocity at the end, because we must conserve angular momentum. If I made that argument and you were doing an experiment and said, I'm going to refuse the outcome of your experiment. So, so he just keeps putting this in some way like I'm denying the experiment. No, I haven't seen the experiment. If you do the experiment and you prove levers fail to conserve momentum, then I'll agree that levers are useful, not useful. I can't use levers as an example. Unless in our calibration test, I get this specific result, would you accept that response? I don't even know what you're saying. I'm saying to you, I don't have any confidence in levers at all. I will not even talk about them anymore if they can't conserve the momentum when the masses are the same. When I mean, it's like a duh point. I mean, duh, I'm saying to you, yes, you win the argument. Levers can't convert the energy, the momentum. They can't conserve momentum. Well, why would I talk about using levers in a momentum experiment if they don't conserve momentum? That would be uh, pointless. And the two masses are at the same R distance, and it can't even conserve the energy at all, the momentum. Why would I even worry about it? It's not a relevant subject anymore. You've debunked uh, levers as momentum conservers. Okay. Because it's not conserving your model of momentum. Well, of course. Yes, of course. It has to be my model of momentum because mine doesn't think there's anti-momentum. My model doesn't include a thing called anti-momentum. 
So yeah, there's only movement and everything that's moving counts. So if more stuff is moving after the experiment than before the experiment, you've got a problem. We have different models of momentum. I'm saying I will no longer. Yeah, I mean, just I had to keep pointing this out. Longer argue it. I'm saying the argument's over. You've won the argument. If levers can't even conserve the momentum in the Newton's cradle kind of way, where the masses are the same, if it can't conserve the momentum, then I'm never going to talk about. If it can't do the Newton's cradle, this is the simple analogy. Bang flies off at the same, all the momentum gets transferred from one object to the other object. This isn't complicated. And the argument is, is that levers can do it with uneven masses. Levers allow you to do a Newton's cradle with uneven masses. I can have a two mass or a five mass or a 10 mass. And I can basically convert all the energy from one object into the other object on the other side by just putting it at the proper distance from the fulcrum. That has been the argument for two fucking years. Not levers ever again. Okay, so so that is a test that we can do, and if it matches your prediction, then you're correct. We can, and uh, we'll we'll go into the next one. If <laughs> whatever the next one is, right? Okay. Well, I happen to be correct, so then you should have gone on to the next one, which was the next stage in the experiment, which is do it with two to one masses, but without springs, for fuck's sake. No springs, no clay, no bullshit. If it doesn't match your prediction, then the lever thing, you, you would admit, okay, levers aren't conserving momentum in the way that I think they are. They're not conserving the momentum, kind of obviously, but you could say, yes, in my way, they're not conserving momentum because clearly one object's going half as fast as the other object that went in, you've lost half the energy. So if you've lost half the movement of, of things in the universe, if half the motion is gone, then clearly you haven't conserved the momentum. I mean, it's not on the other side of the lever. If half the energy is only half the energy is on the other side of the lever, then the lever's failing. Again, I would say we've got different models of momentum. In my model of momentum, it shouldn't be conserved because, again, we've got this external force. But in my model, I'm also including angular momentum. And that, I'm saying, should be conserved. So, so this whole angular momentum is the silly part, right? Because who cares? And again, he, he disagrees with a point where I think he's, you know, a physicist would say you're wrong. So he's saying if I had two wheels, identical wheels, and one of them has, I put a 10 mass here, one distance from the fulcrum, and put a 5 mass on the other wheel, twice the distance from the fulcrum, those two wheels are going to spin with the same energy. It's going to take the same amount of force to spin them a certain number of rotations. Because it's going to be the same momentum in both wheels. So, okay. Let me, let me make one other point that I, I did want to kind of check. Um, in, I, I watch your, your kind of do's and don'ts about the lever setup. Uh, I appreciate you. Uh, so he's conceding. He saw the video where I explain how we don't want any springs and sponges and bullshit. We just want to bang one side of the lever and have it fly out the other side. So he's conceding. He saw that video. Uh, uh, making that one. So one other thing I wanted to say is you wanted there to be no bounce in the object when object. So, so again, it says I don't want there to be a bounce. I don't want there to be a substance that causes a bounce. I don't want there to be anything to force it to bounce. A bounce is stopping the energy from going in. If something's bouncing off the wall, it can't go into the wall. You can't put the energy into the lever if something's bouncing back. If anything's bouncing back, then that energy obviously didn't get into the lever. I mean, duh. I, I, I can't even, like I said, I still can't reconcile how, how you people can defend this notion that I can throw something at a brick wall, a rubber ball, and the more it bounces, the more energy I put into the wall. That's your theory. It's crazy. If one hits the lever, is that correct? Well, I'm predicting that if you have the locations correct, there won't be. Just like there's no bounce in a Newton's cradle. A Newton's cradle doesn't bounce, okay? See, Newton's cradles don't need springs. Sponges, clay, you don't enhance them by putting crap on the balls. Uh, the first ball knocks all the energy into the second ball and it's clean. 
I'm saying that the lever allows you to do Newton's cradle with uneven masses. So I'm basically saying if you get that distance precise, and the only thing you have to add to it is, as you pointed out, is the weight of the lever. So the weight of the lever has to be uh, known, and you have to change that R just a little tiny bit to account for. So all you do is you change the distance that the ball, the lighter ball is at. You move it in a little bit because you're going to lose a little bit of energy moving the lever itself. So you account for a little bit of energy you lost from the lever by just moving it in a little bit. The fact that you lost a little energy moving the lever itself in a horizontal circumstance. So we're talking about the horizontal rather than the vertical experiment. Okay, in okay. the vertical experiment, you have a counterweight that compensates for the weight of the lever. So the lever becomes the, 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 the lever becomes moot because of that counterweight. But in the horizontal case, you have no counterweight. So you do have to actually use some of the energy to spin the physical lever itself. So there's a tiny difference in the energy. So you'd have to move that R a little bit, but I'm just saying it shouldn't bounce. If you have those distances just right, the deceleration on one side, I'm saying will perfectly match the acceleration on the other side, and you will accomplish the task of moving most of the momentum into the object. So object one, if I made object one out of clay. Well, there it is. <laughs> what the fuck? So why would you even say the word? Why would you make object one out of clay? So it goes splat on the lever. It splats. And somehow splatting will help get the energy into the other side of the lever. Just, how can anybody have this conversation? And with the, this, I, I mean, I guess I was, you know, at the time this happened, I was like, what the, f how? clay, what are we talking about clay for? I don't want to talk about springs. I don't want to talk about clay. I don't want to talk about anything springy or bendy or any of that crap. I want to talk about converting the energy from one side to the other through a hard, rigid bar. And I did it again, making object one out of, I don't know, like... Clay, no, no, clay, clay deforms permanently, so you're using the energy up moving the clay. So obviously... So there, I mean, can I make it any clearer? I mean, I've clearly pointed out to him the last thing you want to do is put clay or permanently deformable objects anywhere near this experiment. So to say that we agreed to use clay is just such a lie. You're not putting the energy into the object because the clay is moving. But again, the, the point that I'm making is there is some, uh, it, it's going to depend on the properties of the both the properties of the objects that I'm throwing at it and... <laughs> no, that's what we were talking about. And I just pointed out how you don't want to use clay. It deforms permanently. Bad idea. It's going to use up the energy. Don't do it. In the properties of the lever, if I make the lever out of like some flexible material, um, there's going to be some, some bounce to that. Well, obviously we want to evade that. So I used aluminum, uh, you know, an aluminum. So I'm making it clear. You want to evade anything springy, anything deformable. What does that have to do with the experiment? It has nothing to do with it. Why would I do that to the experiment? Why would I break the experiment by putting bending, deforming things in the experiment? They can't help do the experiment. Rod, you know, hollow rod, and so that was pretty rigid. So I'd argue it, something like that would be an appropriate lever. Okay, so you're saying we, we don't want bounce, we want it to just kind of hit and kind of stick and as that thing rotates. So my argument <laughs> yeah so he seems to have had the he got, seemed to have got it right except he said the word stick right because i'm again i was never arguing that you need to have anything sticky the whole argument is if you do the experiment right it's going to stick all to its own just like a newton's cradle doesn't need any glue or anything in between <laughs> the conversion will happen it doesn't need to stick i i went through the math for this yesterday what if we have a bouncy ball kind of coming in and we have this same mass ratio. So if I, I use a, a bouncy M1. I'm gonna play this through just because I'm curious what I said, because obviously I just hated the word bounce anywhere near this experiment. It just wasn't something I was interested in. Um, I went through the calculation and the final velocity of object two, in that case will actually be greater. I got four thirds times V1 initial. My model, in, in my model... So he didn't do that experiment. So all he did was spring and clay. <laughs> you know, that's it. Again, this can be another prediction that we can test. I can try both a case where it sticks or hopefully has as little bounce as possible, and I can try another case where, you know, it bounces off the side. My, 
model. It bounces off the side. What would that mean? So again, and the whole idea is a stick by what? A blob of clay? A deformable? Too silly. Uh, again, the classical physics model says if there's no bounce, the final velocity of object two should be two thirds of what object one started with. If there is bounce, if it flexes, if that kind of object coming in flexes and then springs the other one. And so he's saying it's more energy if it flexes. That's kind of funny too, right? Somehow, magically, the, the bending lever adds more energy. Way you're actually going to get more velocity out of that case. So right, right. I, 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 and I would argue, you know, I guess you could we could share the patent on the free energy machine. But in my opinion, you've just made free energy then. So that's just miraculous, frankly. The the way I got this equation involved using conservation of energy. There's in, in a little bit if we want to go through the you know is energy created when I have an elastic collision and we seem to in your model make momentum. We can talk about that. Um, you no, know, I'm just saying, show me. I'm just saying, clearly, yeah. if you can make this thing happen, I'm saying I can make a billion dollars on it. So that's all I'm saying to you. Is if you can make something come back with more energy than it went in, I'm saying I can I can capitalize on that. I can. All right. So wait enough of that. Uh, so so we brought up clay in the original, and I clearly said, don't touch it. Deformable absorbs the energy. So I clearly made the argument preemptively to him how that's completely against what you want to be doing. All right, so he's just such a liar. All right, so now we'll read the silly comments. Um, we talked about the kind of collisions here. So obviously at that point, I'm responding to the idea of bounce and not to um, particularly springs or sponges. I wasn't agreeing to springs and sponges. I was opposed to anything that causes bounce. And I was opposed to the idea that the hard objects will bounce because they don't bounce in the Newton's cradle. The ball comes in in the Newton's cradle, the other ball leaves. There's no bounce. I said that over and over. All right, anyway, uh, where I talk about using foam to lessen the bounce and springs to increase the bounce to get uh, closer to the two cases. So I don't even know what that means to get closer. Closer to what? Again, I kept saying you don't want anything bending. You don't want to deform anything. You want to try to convert the energy from one side of the lever to the other side. So it's just such, I don't know, it's such a lie. DS response was, I don't think the bounce is a subject. So I was pointing out that if you do it right, it won't bounce. If you have the distances right, there won't be any bounce. That's the point I was making. As long as you have the distances right. So those are there's the words right there. As long as you have the distances right, as long as you have the one mass two distances away, there's no bounce. If you put it less than two distances away, there'll be a little bit of a bounce. And if you put it further away, you're going to get a lot of bounce because now it's much heavier. So you can't get the energy in. But if you have it the right location, there's no bounce. All right, uh, it's going to be doing the conversion just fine. So again, I keep using the word conversion, keep talking about how that's all you're trying to do is convert the energy from one object into the other object. You don't want to create any bouncing. All right, he goes on to dismiss the flexible lever. Of course I dismiss it. It's not, it's not, it's not an aid in getting the energy from one side of the lever into the other side. It's not going to help. It's going to create bounce. You don't want bounces. All right. Which he has no prediction for. Of course, I did have a prediction. That's a lie, too. He has nothing approaching a robust model, says him, says him again. So he was the one wrong in two of his predictions. So he got two predictions wrong. He got it wrong about the fact that levers can oscillate. That's one of them. He got it wrong in the sense that it's not half the bounce. And uh, there's a third one somewhere. All right, anyway, um, <clears throat> uh, a condition I satisfied by using a carbon fiber rod. I did use a flexible rod later showing it didn't make a difference for angular momentum. Well, it didn't make a difference because they're both springs. Spring, uh, using the lever that's springy or using an actual spring are both going to defeat the function of the lever. Levers can't do their job of transferring the energy if you make them rubbery. They don't work. Nobody's going to use a rubbery lever, all right, to try to lift something. 
All right. You didn't show it because it would not go your way. So that's the accusation again to him. So he didn't show the part where he says it came out exactly as his prediction predicted and would prove me wrong. So the part that would have proven me wrong, he didn't show. Why didn't he do that? Uh, oh, so you did the experiment yourself and can demonstrate this to be the case. No, I mean, I'm just saying that you're telling us that you, you got a result that's exactly what your prediction said, and you didn't film it because... You didn't film it because... <laughs> some You thought somehow it wasn't right. That's what you said, okay? You basically said, uh, well, it was just like the spring, so I discounted it. I don't know. That's exactly what your prediction was. So why wouldn't you film it to show us that, see, it came out just like the spring? Because it would have proven me wrong. Why didn't you film it? I mean, again, to evade this simple point, it's just amazing. Of course it's not. He's not being honest. Uh, that in every other case, the whole range of cases I tested, we get conservation of angular momentum. So he keeps saying conservation of angular momentum, which is really, frankly, if you take angular momentum seriously, it's not the squared function. The squared function is just doing the, just applying Leibnizian math, and you're saying something going twice the speed has four times the energy. So that's just you claiming so. But the fact is, is that angular momentum means it is, in fact, going twice the velocity. That's what angular momentum means. The angular momentum is, is that, yes, the 5 mass will be going twice the velocity of the 10 mass. I, I can't believe he keeps using angular momentum as if angular momentum isn't real momentum. If you're conserving the momentum, it means that the 5 mass is going twice as fast. And no increase in energy, <laughs> again, says him. Uh, <clears throat> but change that one slight part of how the collision happens and the physics completely changes and we break multiple physics principles. So this is his response to why didn't you film the hard elastic experiment that I was arguing from the very beginning was the only experiment of any interest. So why didn't you film the experiment I specifically pointed out was the one I wanted to see? Okay, are you had a camera watching me and saw me do this? You claimed you did it, and then bury the evidence. That's exactly what you stated you did. You did the experiment and you didn't film it because you thought it was exactly as you predicted, and therefore it wasn't interesting because it came out exactly as you, your math predicted which would be evidence against me, which is exactly why you should publish it. Amazing lie. This is what I mean about claims versus evidence. I, this is what I mean about integrity. He Obviously, this is not, science isn't made of people that have integrity. With intelligence does not come integrity, character, decency. This is a lying, slandering piece of fucking goddamn pus. He's claiming he proved my argument wrong when, no, he proved his own argument wrong. Okay, it's also on the record that not only was your prediction incorrect, right? Which ones? <laughs> so, I think that was in there earlier, but okay, so you're going to pretend you don't know what prediction you got wrong? All right. I tried to make it clear that angular momentum should be conserved in all cases. So, he just keeps saying this crap. Okay. Uh, which it was, with 22 out of 26 trials showing a match better than 5%. He wasn't even doing angular momentum of the actual transfer. It was after the object left the lever. He was just measuring the residue stuck in the lever, how much motion was stuck in the lever. That's what he was measuring. He wasn't measuring the angular momentum of the actual carts. Oh, it's so pathetic. I gave specific predictions for the perfectly elastic and the completely inelastic cases. So again, what would completely inelastic be? How could you possibly do whatever this is, a completely inelastic case? So he says if I put enough clay on there, the lever would never feel the other object. Would that be completely inelastic? Would be that you absorb every bit of energy so the lever doesn't move at all. 
I mean, it's such a moronic statement, the completely inelastic cases. What the fuck is a completely inelastic case? There is no such thing. Uh, which gave us the maximum range of expected results. You see, it just keeps saying this gibberish. There's no maximum range of expected results. Oh, yeah, it came somewhere within the range of being 100% wrong and 100% right. You know, somewhere in that range. The answer was right in that range, somewhere between 100% right and 100% wrong. We were somewhere right in between. Amazing bullshit. All right. Uh, with the spring bumper cases being closer to elastic and the clay bumper cases being further from elastic. <laughs> yeah, a lot further. Uh, completely useless. All right. Again, I made it clear right in the right in the video, okay? I mean, he says the word clay and I react to it right away. No, no, no. Clay, bad idea. All right. Every tested case. So there's no tested cases here. There's just clay or spring. Two things I didn't have any interest in, okay, was within that expected range. I never claimed it would be able to make either a perfectly elastic or a completely inelastic case, so why not? Newton's cradles do it with a tremendous amount of, you know, conservation of the momentum. So this is a silly pile of shit that somehow you can't get better results than mush. Sure you can. Uh, just that the actual results would be within that range. So again, within what range? There's no range here. There's no range he's describing. I mean, he's saying like, oh yeah, it was in within 10% or something. No, he's saying it's within two diametrically opposed experiments. Somewhere within what you would expect if it was completely elastic and what you would expect if it was completely inelastic. Somewhere in that range. Well, that range is, guess what, 100. That's the whole, that, that's the whole entire range of possibility. There is no other possibility. Oh, it's just so dishonest. All right, back again. I also love that for my, for my results being off by 5 to 10%, he had, he had uh, things, uh, trials that were 60% of the energy was lost. 69% in one of the cases. Huge, gigantic destructions of the momentum. So, of course, the kinetic energy can be conserved when you destroy 60% of the momentum due to reasonable sources of experimental er error. Reasonable? None of it's reasonable. Invalidate my results. Note that I explain why the percent errors for CART-1 after the collision are high because the speeds are very close to zero and more greatly affected by being the elastic and completely inelastic cases. So I don't even know what kind of bullshit that is. <laughs> somehow if the cart's not moving, somehow that makes a difference. But I would still show DS predictions to be completely wrong. What prediction of mine was proven completely wrong? Which one? I only predicted for a hard inelastic. You didn't do any hard inelastic and the only other prediction was, I guess I wouldn't have predicted that springs wouldn't matter for the conversion. But the fact is, you did do the perfect conversion. The one where you got the completely wrong answer. Where you said half the energy goes into one object and half the momentum comes back as a bounce. It didn't bounce. So you were completely wrong. You were proven completely wrong. And you're just lying to say you proved any of my cases wrong because you didn't do any of my cases. Okay, if we take the 3x three, uh, three mass and one-third distance cart to the ideal case, he's well over 50% off. So again, I'm not 50% off because you had a spring on the lever. I didn't make any predictions for spring experiments. Fuck. Amazing. Further off for the conversion of energy, less than one-third ds expected for the conversion of linear momentum. So again, he's talking about linear momentum now. Well, well what's that? So it's angular momentum, now it's linear momentum. I mean, make up your mind. Okay, utter garbage for ds prediction. So again, wrong. His prediction was completely annihilated by the equal mass and equal distance experiment. You got it completely wrong, and I was completely right. Uh, but he got the right model, sure. <clears throat> so he didn't do any hard elastic experiments, just a fact. He says he did, but
but we didn't show us that. So that's just a lie as far as we can tell. And the only reason why he says he didn't show us because it came out exactly the way he predicted. And therefore he didn't show us because his model was proven right by it. And that's a good reason not to show it is because his model was proven right. Which doesn't make any sense. I mean, only a I mean, only the most dishonest of Cretans could sit there and say, that makes sense. All right, so some more dishonesty. Uh, you use materials that he did not agree to. So clearly, I didn't agree to using clay. All right, and I opposed using a spring. I said right from the start, I'm not interested in springs. Uh, false. If he's changing his criteria, so I didn't change anything about my criteria. I've been arguing the same thing for two years. Nowhere in those two years have I suggested putting anything in front of the, the cart or on top of the lever, ever. Then he should actually try the experiment himself, which, yeah, I already have. Two months ago, like, uh, I started doing some lever experiments. Um, and I found, you know, that catapults are more probably a better thing to do. So that's what I'm going to keep working on is catapult experiments and levers. But yeah, I, I got sidetracked with some other stuff, uh, a couple of oscillators and whatnot, and I have to make room for doing the experiment indoors. Uh, so it's going to be a while. But yeah, I, I intend on doing the experiments because they need to be done. The fact that nobody in the history of science has done hard elastic lever experiments is still a truth. There's no example except, yeah, no, I, I Brozo did a catapult. So we're still waiting. Okay. It looks like he was starting to. Well, yeah, I am going to continue to. Uh, but then suddenly stop. I didn't suddenly stop. So more bullshit. And change the setup completely. Uh, yeah, I went to something where there's no losses to the lever. So the ideal is to take is to get the hundred percent result, to be able to get one hundred percent of whatever force you're using and get all of it into the other side. And catapults are capable of doing that, in the sense that for both objects the losses will be identical, so <clears throat> they won't affect the velocities at all. So you don't have to worry about how heavy the catapult is. How heavy the catapult won't make any difference. All right, if you don't believe me, it's on the DS channel titled For the Record or something like that and see for yourself. So, of course, he's already seen the, the videos, but you'll you know, pretend otherwise. Uh, stacked claims. So I don't know what that even means. I demonstrated that we do not get free energy out of the lever. So he's, he's claiming he demonstrated it by putting clay and springs on the lever. But he wouldn't do it by allowing hard, rigid contact, which is exactly the conditions I've been arguing for two years. All right. And that it's <coughs> conservation of angular momentum. So again, more dodgy words. What does this an angular momentum mean? It's just words, right? I mean, again, are they, uh, is he really, he said it in the video, right? So we both heard him. He's saying it takes more energy to turn a five mass on the outside or a 10 mass on the inside. He says it does. So that would be another experiment to do. He's saying it takes more energy to turn the wheel. And the argument is, is no, angular momentum says it's exactly the same thing. There's no difference between turning this, okay, and turning this. Half the mass at twice the distance is the same thing. That's what angular momentum says. Uh, that's important in this case. Both directly contradict DS, so they don't. Uh, but I'm sure that's included in his record. If you want to follow his fan function, fiction take on reality, I can't stop you. So he he's too cowardly to, to debunk five-minute videos. And I, I can't even pay him to do it. And this coward is talking about, you know, the credibility of somebody else's arguments when he can't be... Um, there's no incentive great enough to get him to man up and show up for the fight. What a weasel. All right, so... 
Bass and Bass says again, why even use clay bumper? It just sounds stupid on its face. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Uh, so here's more physics Michael crap. Let's see what he says. For the same reason that I also did cases that weren't balanced. Yeah, for no good reason, right? So I pointed out how what this is, these are useless experiments. The whole point of me arguing about levers is using them as a conversion device. They can't convert if you put the objects in the wrong location. There will not be a conversion of the energy. We'll not move it from one object to the other object. It will fail to convert. I, I mean, you know, so he did prove me right again in the sense that he proved that, yeah, it doesn't work. <laughs> you know, put the masses in the wrong location and it doesn't work. Duh. All right. So more of this bullshit about angular momentum. He just keeps going back to this, this desperate angular momentum horseshit. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> okay, also did cases that weren't balanced and using both a rigid and flexible lever. Right, things I pointed out I have no interest in. It has nothing to do with the experiment I am arguing will demonstrate conservation of momentum. Uh, to demonstrate the conservation of angular momentum holds regardless of those details. So let's understand, he's not measuring the angular motion of the objects. He's measuring how much energy was left in the lever after it pushed the objects. So none of his angular momentum measurements have anything to do with the motion of the objects. It just has to do with the motion of the lever after the objects have left the lever. All it requires is that there are no external torques. So it keeps playing with words. The spring is actually fairly efficient in transferring energy in the wrong direction. So, so again, it's kind of obviously. Springs are really good if you want something to bounce back. They're really bad if you want the energy to go forward. Oh, too stupid. Because while it does absorb some energy as it compresses, it's not so much the compression that's the problem, it's the expansion that's the problem. Because it's going to expand in the direction the energy came in in. It's going to cause a reflection. It gives that energy back when it returns to its original state. Yeah, it gives it back in the wrong direction. Oh, God. So he didn't really answer the question, right? Why even use a clay bumper? Was there an answer in here somewhere? No. Why would you use a, def a permanently deformable substance? I mean, it's just on its face, insanely pointless. I think you're referencing the one of the I think you're referencing to one of the completely therefore your model failed. Okay, and then he says, um, completely inelastic collision predictions. So again, who made predictions about completely inelastic? And what the fuck is completely inelastic? What does that even mean? What what does he mean by completely inelastic? Completely deformable? What, what does that mean? <laughs> Where the collision is such that the cart sticks to the lever at the end. Well, again, it'd be fine if it stuck and it was hard. The point is, is if you're going to use a deformable to stick it, then you're going to use up the energy. I mean, again, anybody can understand that. I mean, a 10-year-old can understand that. I agree. It didn't get a completely inelastic collision. It didn't get a, a, any kind of a collision. <laughs> You just ruin the whole collision part. You can't have a good collision if you put something smushable between the things. If you put a, a, a crate of tomatoes between something. It doesn't matter if it's smushable. You've ruined the experiment. Anyway, that is as correct as it is irrelevant. Amazing. He's saying using up the energy is irrelevant to transferring it on a lever. So if I put a bunch of comfy pillows on the lever, it's irrelevant. It's still going to work just as good. Oh, I mean, too silly. The elastic and completely inelastic predictions gave the maximum range. So again, more kind of crap. Range between what? Failure and complete success. And you were somewhere between failure and complete success. It doesn't make any sense. No, no it's not a rational range. Everything has to fall in that range somewhere. Every single outcome would have to fall in that range somewhere. Every trial was within the valid range. Well, you says it's valid. I'm not saying it's valid, that's for sure. Uh, with springs being closer to elastic and clay being further from elastic. Whatever, the, whatever. Obviously, clay is an elastic, so yeah, duh. I mean, amazing bullshit. Uh, anyway, reference, just for the record, 
uh, time. I don't know what the time is there for. Your video reference was from a month after the discussion to set the parameters for the experiment. What? Huh? Yeah, the video was to point out how you lied perpetually about what was said. I mean, the video was our clips of the previous conversation, the stuff that happened before the experiment. The videos are clips of videos before the experiment. Amazing. Where I specifically asked about the bumpers, and I specifically said, what the fuck, clay? Don't use clay, it's deformable. <laughs> I mean, shit. Okay, and he said it wouldn't make a difference. Right, so that, that was a, you could say that maybe there was a legitimate misunderstanding. But my whole point in arguing was I'm saying it wouldn't make a difference to the hard elastic. It's not going to bounce. It's not going to be an issue. Hard elastic won't bounce. If you got the distances right. I said those exact words. If you have the distances right, no bounce. All right, I gave him over an hour and a half to set his conditions. I spent two years setting my conditions. Let's just understand, nobody is in doubt about what I'm arguing the lever is supposed to do in the experiment. The idea is to get the energy from one object into the other object. The idea isn't to find ways to not get the energy into the other object. And that seems like his only purpose was to figure out ways to not get the lever to work. Uh, so once I had the setup, he wouldn't just pick minor details. Ama amazing. So he says it's a minor detail that he put a blob of clay in front of the cart. Amazing. To discard everything. So much for that. Again, if he wants to change the primaries, he should try it himself. So again, I was in the process of doing it myself. I used hard steel. I pointed out that, yeah, it works. The, no reflection. I didn't get any reflection. The steel bars hit the lever. They didn't bounce. No problem. All right. Some others in the comments have said that this is just another DS account. So why would you even indulge in this nonsense? Everybody who agrees with me is a sock account. I mean, you're so pathetic. And again, the argument is so lame when every one of your commenters is essentially a sock account. A troll... Um, 50% anyway. I'm not convinced that you, uh, you might just be a someone who has an uncritically, who has uncritically, and the critical thing would be what? What should they be convinced by? Your absolute pathetic lie that you did the hard elastic experiment and it proved you right and you just decide not to film it? I mean, that's a pathetic lie. Okay. Accepted DS claims. Not because any of the experimental evidence DS has provided none. So again, more lies. I have done experiments. But my whole point is, is, you know, the truth of physics shouldn't be dependent on my experiments. These rickety experiments, this shouldn't be what physics is founded on. These are, should be experiments that are done in a laboratory clinically very well. Scientifically. They should be scientific experiments. <laughs> you know, but for some other reason, in any case, I'd like to know the following. So he has questions. Isn't that special? From the lever experiment and the fact that in all these different trials, oh, there are two different trials, clay or spring. Those are your only two choices. And I already mocked springs well before the experiment was done, said I had no interest in spring experiments or bending levers or any of that crap. I made that clear. I demonstrated that the total angular momentum, he keeps saying it, matched up with much higher accuracy. So he keeps talking about the angular momentum of the lever after the object already left. So he measures the same quantity in each experiment. That's absolutely useless. All right. Uh, that we'd ever expect to get from random chance. Does that change your confidence in the <laughs> conversion of angular momentum as an important property of the lever system? So again, why would he think the angular momentum of the lever after the object has left the lever, the amount of energy wasted. He's just measuring the waste energy. How much energy was wasted? How much was lost to the motion of the lever? That's what he's measuring and calling angular momentum. And he's saying somebody should be impressed with that? Oh, wow. Too pathetic. 
uh, what evidence has convinced you that if I had made any of the modifications, so there, no, you said you did. You said you did you do it. You put a screw on the end. You said a rounded screw. You put it on the end of the cart and you did the experiment and you said it came out just like the spring experiment, which would be perfect validation of your theory. And yet you didn't film it. Why wouldn't you film it if it was a perfect validation of your theory? But <laughs> I'm saying, how many times do I have to say that? I just can't believe that all of your fans, all of your defenders are so incredible that they would say that's good, that that is credible statements by a scientist. It came out just the way my science predicted, but I didn't bother filming it. It's like somebody saying I had my cell phone when the UFOs adopted me, but I didn't turn it on. I didn't want to offend anybody. That DS is now complaining about the results would be so dramatically different as to match DS model rather than the classical physics. So again, he says that if I had made any of the modifications, so the, the modification is that you don't put any bumpers on the car and you don't put any crap on the lever. That's the extent of my modifications, that you don't fuck it up with some fucking bullshit on the lever, the things I said don't do. And he says he did do it. So why would you make the modifications now when you said you did do it? You did modify it. And the results came out just like the springs. And for some reason you thought that was an incorrect result when that's exactly what your math predicts. So that's the part that's just impossible to unravel. I mean, your bullshit, your lies have gotten you, you know, now you're trapped in a little lie maze. You know, and I don't know how you're going to get out of the little lie maze. <laughs> okay. I mean, it's just you can't get out of it. You know, pretending you didn't do the experiment when you claimed you did do it. You described doing it. Now you're saying you didn't, you just made that part up. You were lying when you said you did do it. The question is, is why didn't you film it? If the results came out exactly as your physics predicted, why didn't you film it? Yeah, because you're lying, that's why. Oh. So perfect. I spent a lot of time responding to your questions. Please let me know if your response to these. Please let me know your responses to these. These are you think these questions are going to provoke some sort of answer like what? Angular momentum? I don't need no stinking angular momentum. What are you talking about? The angular momentum left in the lever? The energy lost to waste is somehow important? <laughs> yeah, that's my answer. Oh, I just can't believe you people are such liars. All right. So I, I just, you know, it is really pathetic that they, you know, accuse anybody who disagrees with them of being a sock account. I mean, it's just so lame. Especially when they do have channels, you know, with videos on them. I mean, that makes it even lamer. Uh, but anyway is so fucking evil. So there was one other comment here that was just so bad. You're just like, how could somebody say this? I think it was that white pig. Oh, okay. Yeah, white Henry. All right. Uh, I'm glad that BS isn't a real person. He sounds like a real unpleasant character. Huh. I don't know. His description was an unpleasant person, but whatever. Thanks for addressing all the five-minute video. So he says he addressed them in some way. I mean, this is the part where you're just like, oh my God, they can't be this dishonest. How can they be this dishonest? So he somehow debunked what I said about the Deschartelet clay experiments. He proved that that is a good experiment. He hasn't had the balls to actually comment on it. So you don't even know what his opinion is. But if you're saying he did now defend it, Okay, so he's saying it's good physics. Denting clay with round objects is a good way to test for energy. Is that what he's saying? Can we get this lying sack of shit to actually admit that's what he's saying? Because I think most physicists, when it's explained, would say, yeah, that's right, we got fooled by that one. Because that's a gimmick. It really isn't the truth. And the rolling friction argument, where, you know, it can be proven just you know, roll something and measure it, and guess what? I mean, you know, this is something for um, that other retard to do, uh, Dispar. 
Yeah. Just measure the velocity of something rolling at different points. You know, roll something down the same ramp over and over and measure the velocity here, measure it here, measure it here, and measure it at the end. And what you'll find is it goes half the speed after it traveled three quarters of the distance. See, Galileo already did all these experiments hundreds and hundreds of times, so we already know what the outcome's going to be. So that's 500-year-old physics. And you're saying that, okay, even though it lost half its velocity in that very long distance, and it only loses, and it loses another half in this very short last bit of distance, that somehow friction is linear, and it lost the same amount of energy per foot, even though it's obvious that it didn't. So do you think that's good physics? I just can't believe he said, said this statement. Thanks for addressing all the five-minute videos in this comprehensive manner. He didn't address them at all. He didn't counter-argue with anything at all. Nothing. He made no counter-argument. None. 5.9.8 meters per one second. No counter-argument. Newton's saying it only twice the speed, twice the force, twice the velocity, three times the force, three times the velocity. No response. The videos all present nothing but unevidenced claims. So again, they're not unevidenced. It, there's 500 year old evidence for some of the claims. All right, and require nothing more than you have provided to refute them. So have you refuted um, Leibnizian claims? So, I mean, it's a, a, can we just call it a 350-year-old claim of your physics? That it takes as much work to lift four pounds one foot as it takes to lift one pound four feet? That that takes the same amount of energy? Because it doesn't. <laughs> okay. Oh, man, you people are so bad. You're so anti-science. You're so anti the scientific method. You're so anti a fair fight. You're such cowards. You're just such weak bullies. You're just such dickless uh, bitches. <laughs> yeah. Ew. Ew. It's disgusting. The humans walking the earth. Disgusting. <laughs>